Yo, what's poppin' guys? Today I'm gonna show you why Prank Kids are the best possible deck you can play in the Theme Chronicle. I'm gonna show you a few variations of this deck, a few tech options so you can add your own spice to it. And then I'm gonna go through some nasty replays showing off the normal combo lines, showing off the lines you can do with extenders. And I'll teach you guys how to use chain blocking in order to absolutely crush your opponents here. This deck has a super infinite grind game you can recycle everything almost every turn you can keep grabbing back your monsters to your hand back to the field you can protect yourself from destruction by card effects from destruction by battle uh, you have one card combos and you run a ton of non-engine which lets you completely catch your opponent off guard and that's all in addition to the normal combo which off one card just gives you a quick effect right get you get to board wipe their entire Field. all their monsters die instantly all right let's get into it first thing that you'll probably notice is i only have 11 cards in my extra deck and that's because you have four flex spots i'll get to which cards you can play there at the end of the video but just know this already if you open polymerization you get to make any exceed monster from rank one through four that requires generic materials so something like abyss dweller um Gossip Shadow, you can just grab some free negates, uh, some free floodgates right off the bat. And I'm running the Parallel Exceed because I was running some rank 4s in here. There's some spicy tech options. Other than that, we're going to be running 3 of the green kid, 3 of the blue kid, 3 of the red kid, and 3 of the yellow kid. In addition to 3 of the fusion spell, 3 of the field spell, and 1 copy of pranks. We're not running the trap. I think it's a bit too bricky. Um, however, it is a viable option. You could definitely run one copy of it to send off of the green kid in your second turn. It gives you even more follow-up, even more grind game, but you don't ever really want to see it, to be honest. Uh, we're also running three copies of Polarization and Parallel Exceed for our extenders. In addition to Monster Reborn, this lets us play around the most crushing hand trap for this deck, Ash Blossom. And then of course they're also running the cross out and two call by in addition to maxi ash blossom veiler and nibiru um, effect veiler is better than infinite and permanence in this deck because you will be drawing a card during the end phase meaning that you cannot set your infinite and permanence and since you control cards since you will be having uh, at least your continuous spell on the field um, and usually your monsters too right uh, it will be turning off the infinite and permanence all right so why would we run this deck? It's because any single prank kid, so that's three, six, nine, 12, and the search is one, so 15 out of 40 cards uh, are full combo by themselves. And then you have all the non-engine and extenders you get to draw to during your combo. That's crazy. Um, so let's get right into the replays here. All right, for our first replay, we're gonna be playing against Weather Painters. That's a deck I'm going to make a video on after this for the event. So we're going to affect Veiler the Snow. Now, an important thing about Weather Painters, which you'll see in the next video, or if you've already watched my other Weather Painter videos, you'll know this as well. Uh, if they have the canvas out, they can actually dodge the Veiler by tagging out. But since they didn't start with it, that tells me they don't have it already and they're using the snow to search for it. So this is a safe negate. Unless they have call by, in which case it doesn't matter anyways, right? So, I'm going to end the turn here. I have the Ash Blossom to negate a max C, and they have two card sets. Um, one of these cards is in an adjacent column, so that tells me that whatever this back row is on the right side is most likely a canvas, and whatever is all the way on this side is most likely some non-engine. So I'm hoping it's not a floodgate. Um, we can't really play around those without prior knowledge, but we can try to play around Imperm or call by. To the best of our abilities unfortunately not really with this hand we'll just have to hope they hit something that doesn't really matter and we draw the prank kids place this already lets us chain block which is amazing so this is the first lesson uh we link off into our cat this is as per usual and now we're going to chain link one the kid and chain link to the field spell now, if we didn't have the field spell and we only use the kid here, if they had Ash Blossom, our turn ends. So that really sucks. So what's really good here is we have the field spell to chain block the dropsies because you can't Ash Blossom the, this effect. This just uh, decreases their attack. Uh, the cool thing is this works even if they don't have any attack to decrease as 
uh, the Weather Paint of Snow has zero attack, we can still use this to prevent them from using Ash Blossom on our kid here. So we're going to summon out always the green kid here, and then we're going to go into Doodle Doo. Now we can chain link one the uh, kid in the graveyard, chain link two the Doodle Doo, and as you can see, they have Ash Blossom here. So that's the reason we chain link it this way. Um, the kid gets you another kid and dumps one of your prank kids cards to the graveyard and the bird adds a prank kid spell trap from your deck to your hand. So we're losing the spell trap that we're adding here and we're also getting max seed. So we're going to fire off our own Ash Blossom here in response. If they had a call by on this Ash Blossom, we would at least get our Doodle Doo to resolve and that would get us access to both of the spells we want to be searching during the combo. This way, because we made the green kid second, we get to guarantee access to one of them. So we're gonna force this out, and it turns out they're actually on the Aurora, so we can't really beat over it, unfortunately. But we get to tribute off the bird, and now we get to add back the spell that we sent. This is how we always guarantee access to the spell. Now, the problem is that uh, the ban list hit Meowmu, so it's only a one copy. Uh, this means the only way we ever get back our one card combo is if we actually search for the pranks to shuffle it back. Now, I don't really feel threatened at all by um, Weather Painters, to be honest, so I don't really care here. So I'm just going to go for pranks, assume I will live another turn because this deck doesn't really do that much, let's be honest. Uh, it needs some turns to set up. Uh, if I don't do anything in my next turn, I will like 100% lose. But I have a turn easily, so I'm just going to go for a bit of a longer grind game. And as long as they keep them off, uh, too many resources, we're super fun. So we get to use this to pitch any prank kids card to summon out the token. Now we go into our second Doodle Doom. It can't use its effect, unfortunately, because it is a hard once per turn. But this lets us link off the Roxies. Now, what I should have done here is banish the Nibiru, but I'm greedy. I have no clue why, uh, but like, they're never going to play into Nibiru, right? They will summon once a standby phase, and then maybe they'll summon another monster. So that'll be their second summon, and they'll go into Link for three, and then they already have their Negate, but they're not getting that many summons anyways. So Nibiru's kind of dead in this matchup. You should get rid of it here. So we're going to end our turn here. Prank's going to shuffle back the Cat, and one of our Links here, very important. And we're drawing to the second Maxi. Unfortunate, but... We're going to fire this off in the draw phase before the standby phase resolves because uh, I'm pretty sure they have priority to summon this back here. Now we're getting our fusion spell. That's really nice. We're tagging out the link to add back two guys to her hand. That's just more advantage, more follow up. So it'll be over the green kid. I don't really care. And they're setting another card here. Now they didn't want to give me another draw under max seat, but they could have used uh, the rainbow canvas tag this out for something else, and then they would have had a negate live next turn. But they decide to just sit on this, not to give me any draws. They're going to be setting a card here. And since we shuffled back our cat, we get to go into another one here. Now we're just going to combo off a little bit, chain block this again, reduce their attack, so we get to be over everything. Make a doodle do, and it was imperm from the first turn, which we get to dodge by activating our quick play. Right here. Now, I could have also gone for the Rocket Ride, which lets me tag out for two Prankets from the Graveyard, but I decided not to. We're going for this one. Um, this has uh, the secret hidden effect. When your Prank Kid's monster attacks, your opponent cannot activate cards or effects until the end of the damage step. So this means if I go to the battle phase, as soon as I declare my attack, they can't activate anything until the damage step is over. So I can attack with the Weather Washer or with, I'm going to make the Link Monster, I'll be able to attack with that. And then they can't respond. And then I get priority back to attack during the damage step. So I can attack again uh, with my next Prank Kid and then they can't attack again. So you'll see this here. I'll be beating over both of his guys here and he can't respond. So what you have to do to play around this, if you're this Weather Painters player, is you need to toggle on and then at the start of the battle phase, you can still use the rainbow canvas to tag out. That way you at least get a kid back, uh, sorry, a, a painter back in the next turn for follow-up. This way I'm just going to completely clear the board. And I still have Pandemonium. 
And I still have all my guys here, so I'm going to be able to make Butler again, because I shuffle it back into the end, uh, extra deck during the end phase, so they're completely screwed from here. Alrighty, for this replay, we get to go first here. We're going to lead with not the green kid. Um, so I really prefer to lead with the red or the blue kid. The reason is, if we get the green kid second, we get to chain link one the green kid, chain link two the bird, and then if they imperm or ash the bird, we get to respond, um, well, not respond, but on resolution, we get to choose which spell card we want to send with the green kid. And that way we can guarantee to get um, the spell that we need for our hand into rotation. Because normally I would add the pranks continuous spell off of the bird. But since I already have pandemonium here, um, I would send it off of the green kid if they imprim the bird. Right, because if I already sent the pandemonium off of this kid, then I would lose access to pranks, which would be kind of terrible. And I prefer to use Roxy's last, uh, unless I'm doing the poly combo for a rank four. Uh, more on that later. I prefer to use this last because I'm pulling out a bunch of prank kids out of my deck, summoning them from the deck, sending them from the deck to the graveyard. So when I draw with the Roxy's, I'm more likely to actually. Um, draw into a non-engine card which gives me an additional disruption for free so i'm less likely to draw the red kid i'm less likely to draw a pandemonium i'm less likely to draw the green kid and i'm more likely to draw an ash blossom a maxi a veiler and the biru so or called by or something so that's very very good that's why i use them last that's also why i run through two of the birds during my combo you're playing into nibiru anyways so this just uh takes up an extra deck slot for another draw, but it's also great for your grind game anyways. I prefer to banish the green kid if I can, because uh, I don't like using the green kid past turn one. Turn one, it's so good. It's so necessary turn one. You need it to get both of your spells, the pranks and the pandemonium into rotation. But afterwards you empty your deck a bit too fast with it. And it kind of inhibits your grind game a little because you're forced to send in order to um, actually get the summon. And important, we shuffle back the cat here. So we have it for next turn. We shuffle back a doodle do. Um, so we're shuffling back less kids into our main deck. So we have a higher chance of drawing to hand traps. And as you can see, we're actually going to draw into the maxi here. Amazing. So we're going to fire this off uh, in the standby phase here. We're going to ash blossom this. And here I'm going to decide not to use the call bite uh, because I prefer to get my ash blossom through. Um, this way I have Call By and Ash Blossom as an interruption, otherwise I would have Maxi, which could potentially draw into um, more hand traps. Uh, and it could also help me with my double pandemonium since it's not a once per turn. So I could make more fusions. It's probably better to uh, let that resolve. But we're going to use this year. Now we have access to make the butler here, and it's going to be Crusadia, so that's kind of unlucky. Uh, they're going to try to OTK us. Uh, unfortunately, they do have piercing, and they always happen to open the parallel exceed. And my plan here is I'm going to make butler, I'm going to blow up their entire field. So I'm going to let them summon this so I get to keep the Ash Blossom for something that would help them extend afterwards. Now, this none of this is a real threat. There's nothing like exceed wise they could make here in this event because Baguska is banned. So there's nothing that really threatens me here. Maybe they make Dweller, which kind of hurts my follow up, I guess, but I don't really mind that much. And they're gonna go into Nightmare Phoenix here, uh, blind target one of my back row, and it's gonna be Call by the Grave. So important, I clicked on his graveyard, I checked what does he have here. Like, it's gonna get destroyed, I have to use it anyways. So the Arborea here, they have the Maximus, they have the Magius. Hitting any of these two wouldn't matter. This kind of hurts their follow-up slightly, but not really because they have multiple. This is the one that doubles the battle damage. So this is what I initially thought we would have to hit. But reading this card, uh, you get to actually banish it from the graveyard to protect one of your Crusadia monsters from battle or effect destruction. And what does your butler do? It destroys by card effect. So we're getting rid of this one. Unfortunately, I do have the cross out, so it actually never mattered um, if I tried to let my maxi resolve or not. 
And we're going to go straight into the butler here. All right, and I like putting the green kid on the last chain link uh, because if this one gets negated, that's great for me. I don't care. I have enough bodies and I don't run through my engine as fast. And then uh, the butler isn't in the same part of the chain link, right? The other one is trigger effects and the butler is a quick effect. I'm just chaining it anyways. I could have used it on resolution as well. It doesn't really matter. And they pass here because they've already spent their normal summon. I've already popped their entire board. They have nothing left here. And with all these monsters on the field, they already see the writing on the wall. All right, in this hand, we open a nice extender. So I'll be showing that off. We unfortunately open with the green kid, but we already have the pranks. So I'm just going to send the pandemonium anyways. And then even if the bird gets negated, I already have access to both of these. So I'm just gonna go through a normal combo, make sure to summon the rocks last so we get the extra draw here. And here I decide I don't really want to lose any of the cards in my hand since Rox does banish one. So I'm going to actually search for place here since I already have access to all uh, of the spells that I need. And with the place, I get to put it on the field. This helps me chain block stuff later on. It helps me boost my attack, lower my opponent's attack. It empties my deck a little bit for my two draws later on. So I'm more likely to draw into hand traps. And... Um, I don't really care about fancies later into the game, so I'm just going to banish that one. And I've played well past Nib. Uh, if they would have could have nibbed me, they would have done it already. So now we can extend it the parallel exceed here. I'm gonna summon out another one. And what I've decided to go for this game is the giant hand. So this is just uh, when my opponent activates a monster effect on the field, I get to detach two materials, then target effect one to their control, and just negate that. And it can't change its battle position as long as the giant hand is on the field. So it's just a free monster negate. I get off the parallel exceed. And now we're going to, after pulling out the second parallel exceed from our deck for even more deck thinning, we're very likely to draw into non-engine like hand traps here. We're going to go into our dog, get rid of this. And we unfortunately still draw a prank kid. So that's kind of unlucky. Uh, we make sure to shuffle back um, the link two and the link one remember we went through two copies that's why there's still one here and the reason we shuffle back green here is because we had one green and grave one on field and one banished and i want to have one in deck to summon out so i can keep uh, going through the effects uh, so i'm going to shuffle back the green kid here so here we have access to butler we have call by maxi we have the giant hand and they have the call by for the dog now the reason why i use the dog first is because this lets me um, resolve Maxi through the call by. If they have Ash and call by, I'm kind of screwed, right? Anyways, it doesn't really matter. But I still have access to two prank kids. So I still get to go into my Weather Washer, which lets me summon back two prank kids from my graveyard with different names, and they can't be destroyed by battle. So I'm pretty much guaranteed to live here, anyways. And they're also under Maxi. That's what I would say. Oh, wait, they are under Maxi. They have the droplets actually that negates my my giant hand they're going to normal the armor get on knife and i'm just going to call by this right away uh important uh well they're going to surrender uh important about the orcist harpoor is a, you can banish this card from your graveyard semicolon special summon one orcist monster from your deck and everything before the semicolon is for cost so if this card gets to activate it will banish itself for cost and it's not in the graveyard anymore so i can't target it with call by the grave so very important uh, I have to have my toggle on. Uh, there's actually a setting. I'll show you the next replay. Um, make sure your toggle is on. And on resolution, when this gets sent to the graveyard, I'm going to banish it right away with a called by. Uh, if they have the field spell, this becomes a quick effect. So that doesn't work anymore. Don't get baited by that. But that's why I have to make sure your toggle is on. And yeah, they just surrender here. Alrighty, this replay was a real banger. My opponent actually was able to play through the board I set up. And we had a real good back and forth here. And I'll go elaborate on the reasons why I did my chain links the way I did. And why one of the things I did was, in my eyes, a misplay. Alright, so we're going to go through the combo normally here. Just as per usual, making sure to use the green kid second. That way, as you can see, we have access to both of our spells here. Even um, if they impermed us, we only get one, but we get to choose which one it is. Just gonna go through a normal combo, make the second bird, 
summon out the yellow one, make the dog. Now we're going to get rid of the green one because I don't like it as much. And we draw into polymerization. Now, if I was running a rank three, I'm running Levier right now uh, for some follow. I was testing out a whole bunch. So I could have made Levier to bring back the fanzies, but it doesn't really matter here right now. Um, if I was running Gossip Shadow, I would be able to summon it out by using polymerization for the two monsters in my hand here. Uh, and then I would summon the Rocket Ride, use its effect, and I would bring back a Lampsies and anything else. Doesn't really matter. And then I could overlay both of the Lampsies for the Gossip Shadow, and then I would get a Monster Negate as well. But also, um, it negates the monsters by changing the effect to both players draw a card. So uh, I have another chance of drawing into a Hand Trap, right? Anyways, I'm not running it, so that's not going to happen here. Again, we shuffle back these three. And draw to another dropsies. So we only have an ash here. Um, and fortunately they don't have any disruption, so we also get the butler. And they're going to lead off by special summoning the Adam Emancipator Analyzer. And of course they're going to hit as per usual. And I'm not gonna let Doki Doki resolve because this could get them a Kwaki Meru Guardian, which gives them a monster to gate. So that would be pretty depressing. That would just kind of crush me. And here, they're threatening making a Dragite, so I have to summon out the butler here. It's not actually live, but if they have like a Kartoran in hand or something, then they would be able to um, actually uh, discard it for its cost. And then Dragite's in the grave and it's live already, so I'm just going to summon this out. Um, I'm not sure I should have used Butler here, to be honest. I think I should have let them play a little bit more and then pop it. Um, I don't think there's anything really that threatens me. Even if they do make the Dragite right away, I can just um, chain to it or on resolution I pop it. But they have the extender here, so that kind of hurts. And they do have the Kartoran, turns out. So it's a good thing we used the Pandemonium when we did. Uh, and they have drop season hand, so they get to normal this. Now they get another water engrave as well. We have to use this to summon out uh, the Roxies. And the important thing is they can't use Roxies here to make the Link 2 and then go from there because they have nothing in their hand to banish. You see, um, you can banish one card from your hand. And if you do draw a card, then special from the Prank Kids. So since they have no hand, uh, that's not going to happen. Instead, they go for Gallant Granite. I got some trauma from Block Dragon, but fortunately, uh, the it's kind of banned now, right? Um, but they do get to search for another extender. And of course, they're going to hit as per usual. Why wouldn't they, right? They hit another Prank Kids. Still not live. And now they're going to go into the Raptite. This lets them banish a card from my graveyard during my turn. Uh, as well as summon out another guy. Grand Mole gave me a jump scare as well. Well, they're going to go for this guy. And of course, he's going to hit as well. I was afraid of the Monster Negate here. But they're going for the Tackle Crusader. Um... I guess it's fair. Yeah, it's their choice, really. And the Dragite here gets to bounce uh, up to five of my cards, depending on how many rocks they draw reveal. So that's going to be one and two right here and three. So they're going to just bounce back, non-targeting all my monsters. Swing here for 8,300 damage, which isn't lethal because Dropsies heals me for 1,000 every time it resolves. So, still going to be on 1700 here. That's really great. And it's going to link off the Tackle Crusader. And it has the effect, if it's sent to the graveyard, you can activate one of these effects. Target one face spell Spellchapter for controls, return that target to the hand. And I can't use them for that turn. I think um, Bouncing Place has value, if you know what uh, my deck does. Uh, it does let me search for another name, but you know I have at least three Prank Kids in hand. Uh, because you just bounced three prank kits to my hand, so this last one probably doesn't matter, really. Um, and the really interesting thing about place, which you'll see in this turn, is it's not a once per turn. You can only activate one per turn, but the effects themselves aren't once per turn. So if I get a second copy, I can use this guy's effect to reduce their attack, then activate my second copy, which is the first activation of the card for that turn, the only one, and then I can use the effect again, to reduce their attack again. So here they make Avermax. Uh, without bouncing my stuff, I think that's a mistake. Avermax cannot be destroyed by card effects. 
Now, um, I'll get to that later. What's happening here is I want this to resolve so I can reduce this guy's attack because I know I have a way to crash into it and everything, right? If I have 25. Um, I do think I slightly must play here. I'm chain blocking this to, to make this resolve here, but I think I could have possibly baited him uh, by reducing his attack. But I also don't think he would have taken the bait, to be honest. So we're going to go for the doodle do here. And I think I probably should have added the fusion spell here. The reason I didn't was I wanted to use place twice. This shows it off. That's really nice for replay. Sometimes this is very relevant. Um, problem is I'm actually out of link monsters here. Um, because um, I was only on one dog while testing this. So that one's in the graveyard. And I'm not getting it back this turn. If I had it, I just instantly win here on the spot. But I don't. So that sucks. But I get to use the Prankus place here again. This time I'm letting him negate it as a bait. I don't think Nibiru is going to do anything. Uh, fortunately, we draw into a hand trap. And now the polymerization obviously going to get negated. I think it would have been better to actually search for the pandemonium here though and then get that negated and then i still have polymerization plus the pandemonium i will be adding back here anyways also not once per turn and we'll use this for the weather washer now you might be thinking okay but it would be really great if i get to out reptite but i can't because the abramax says i can only attack the abramax right uh your opponent cannot target once for attack except this one and then once per battle during damage calculation if this card battles a special summon monster it gains attack equal to my monster's attack. And even if I do somehow still manage to out it, uh, if it's sent to the grave or by one of my cards, by a battle uh, or a card effect or whatever, he gets to shuffle one card on the field into the deck, which is non-targeting and it's in the damage step. So I can't use called by on it. Um, so what do we do? Of course, Weather Washer, best card in the deck. Uh, if your prank kids monsters attack, your opponent cannot activate cards or effects until the end of the damage step. Now, if I had another link, I would use pranks, discard a guy for a token, make the other link, and then I would just completely clear his board here. But that's not going to happen, unfortunately. So we're going to be over this. And as you can see, it never got a chance to activate because the weather washer turns it off. That means it doesn't gain attack, so it'd be over it. And it also doesn't get to shuffle back my cards. So that's crazy. Now, I have this to bring back to unaffected guy, uh, to indestructible by battle guys so i feel very very safe here he probably can't kill me uh however his effect is non-targeting i'm gonna shuffle back some stuff here for the follow-up cross out unfortunately not going to do anything here on this turn and they're going to use this this is non-targeting if this did target i would simply dodge it with uh, the washer activation bring back two guys that can't be destroyed by battle and he can't kill me this turn just 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 no way but if he does reveal uh too many cards here too many rocks um you can probably swing for a bunch, whatever he has in hand. If it has 700 or more attack, I, I just lose there. So we're going to Valor this. And he realizes he can't kill me here. I have full combo again next turn. That's the great part about this deck. And he surrenders here. All right, guys. As promised, I'm going to be showing you guys um, what these four flex spots in the extra deck could be. So you get to choose. I'll be putting them on the screen right now. I, I hope I did the cut right. Uh, so I'll get to link monsters in a second that you can also run. Uh, I'll be right here. But for the Exceed monsters, there's a whole bunch we can go for. We have uh, the Phantom Knights of Cursed Javelin. This is um, on your turn. You get to change the attack of one monster to zero and negate its effects. The Levier, the Sea Dragon, gets you some grind back. Uh, if you banish any of your Prank Kids monsters off of um, your Roxy's effect, off the Yellow Prank Kid, then you get to just summon it one back. We have the Super Quanto Blue Beast. This lets you just pop a spell trap on the field. Gossip Shadow gives you a monster effect by changing a monster's effect into both players draw one card. The Cicada King also just gets to um, negate a monster on the field when it activates its effects. We have the Steel Swarm Roach, which is pretty funny. Uh, if either player would uh, special summon a level 5 or higher monster, you get to actually just negate the special summon and destroy it, like Solemn Judgment. I think this is 
kind of mediocre because most of the decks I've been facing only normal summon uh, high level monsters or they summon links or exceeds which don't have a level or they special summon a bunch of low level bodies. Uh, we also have Evil Swarm Nightmare, which similarly, uh, if your opponent special summons a monster, however, this is just any monster at all, you get to flip that face down. It's just like Book of Moon. Uh, it doesn't work on Link monsters, though. Dweller uh, hurts a few decks decently. Uh, for example, you win the mirror match instantly uh, because the kids can't activate in the graveyard. We have the Giant Hand, which is uh, basically the same thing as the Cicada King. It's just uh, when an opponent's monster activates its effect on the field, you can target one of the monsters and negate it. You have the Exiton Knight, uh, which gets like pop a bunch of stuff. Um, I don't think this will really come up, to be honest, since uh, your opponent needs to have more cards than you do. And this deck gets so much advantage. You special summon so many guys. You draw so many cards. You add so many cards back to your hand. And this also pops all of your cards. So that gets rid of your continuous spell, which you really want to keep. Um, we also have the Dark Rebellion Exceeds Dragon. This just helps you push for lethal here. Um, basically, you just uh, detach two materials from it. And then you get to uh, have the attack of an opponent's monster. And you just steal that for yourself. So that really helps uh, go for damage here and be over big cards. Um, we have Ptolemaeus, which um, I don't think it's really that good. You also need one of these guys in your extra deck as well that you can attach during the end phase. So it'll have three materials. Then your opponent's turn, you get to tag it out for Pleiades, which gives you a bounce. So that's a great way to get spot removal in this deck if you don't want to commit into your butler right away. Uh, you can just use this at the beginning of the turn because Pandemonium does lock you into Prank Kids for the rest of the turn. Um, quick side note, this has a nice interaction with Nibiru where you can actually uh, use uh, Nibiru on Chain Link 1 and then you chain Pandemonium to it to summon out like a washer or something. Uh, that way, um, Nibiru will tribute off the washer and your opponent's entire board but you actually can't summon the Nibiru or the token because they're not Prank Kids monsters. That way you just wipe the full board. Uh, you have to keep Nibiru in your hand. And um, then the two Prank Kids that were fused off get to trigger. So you still get to summon those two guys back. So if you have like a second Pandemonium as well, you could just make Butler after. But you still get like the entire board wipe, right? Uh, this also helps if you only have access to two Prank Kids. Uh, anyways, no more sidetracking. Uh, you can also run this. This is just uh, a Book of Moon, but only on your turn. The spider here lets you remove a monster until your opponent's next standby phase, and then you can attack and increase your attack a bit. Uh, kind of more of a budget option if you don't like running any of these other ones here. Uh, however, rank fours are probably the best ones to make since you can just use Parallel Exceed to also get into them instead of just Polymerization. If you really want to go all in on the Exceeds, you can run Fusion Sage to search for more copies of polymerization here. i to clear the filter real quick. It's this card right here. It just searches for it. Tidno Dragon, of course, just pops a back row, quick effect. It's just Mystical Space Stephune as a monster. Garus is kind of cool. Um, if you're really hurting for interruption, you can skip your next draw phase to draw to discard one. Um, you can also bring back something from your graveyard in defense position. Uh, if you think that'll help you combo off, but you can also use it to just push for game by skipping your next battle phase Which won't exist because you already won the game because you double the attack of one of your monsters And if you get to use your field spell in conjunction with your battle butler It'll be at 35 already if you get to use this twice or you use it on your opponent's turn already uh, It'll be at 4,000 and if you double that it's just lethal by itself, but 75 plus this uh, being 12 uh, sorry, having a 35 and then doubling it with this, plus the 12 from this is already lethal by itself if it's an empty board. Uh, Gallant Granite is a really funny thing. Um, you can search for Roxy's for follow-up for some reason, but the funny thing is uh, you can actually search Nibiru. Um, and then you can do the pandemonium Nibiru combo, which is funny um, and also sometimes very effective. And you can just have it in case uh, something goes awry, right? Like if they um, get to out your pandemonium, like they negate it because they set up a negate before you realized it. Or um, you, uh, 
I don't know, get mystical space to fund in the draw phase because this is main phase only. And of course the Pleiades uh, off the Ptolemaeus. For the Link Monsters, we have these options. Technically, I don't think all of these are equally good. Um, I'll go over a few of the super techie options that are awkward first, and then I'll go over the ones that I think are actually uh, useful. Remember, you only have four slots total for um, these plus the exceeds since you really need to run the other cards to be able to keep up your grind game and keep up your ceiling. So the mediocre ones are Pentastag for piercing. You have the barricade board blocker. This gets to grab back your pranks or your place from the graveyard. Uh, however, you already get those back anyways off of your doodle do, so it doesn't really matter. Uh, the cross sheep, uh, you, you get to trigger the fusion effect uh, pretty consistently, but it doesn't really help and you don't actually gain advantage off making this really. Uh, because your prank kids need to be linked off for other prank kids instead of for generic um, material link monsters to get the advantage. Um, Trigate Wizard, you can technically make live with all three links where you have like the Meow Moo or well, actually any of them in the extra monster zone. And then you can use one of your fusions to bring back uh, your dog and your bird and put them on either side. That even gets to negate live um, as well as the other effects. Don't think this is really good. The Topologic Trisbana lets you banish a bunch of spell traps and uh, burn your opponent, but this hurts you more, to be honest, since we're only on one copy of Pranks and we kind of want it. Uh, we also have the Boreload, which uh, kind of helps like outing some stuff and does like some damage, but for the actually decent options we have, we have both of the Nightmares, one to pop monsters, one to pop back row. Uh, this helps you out like floodgates or some monsters that can't be destroyed by battle or something so that's really good and then arguably the best card is just the ip mascarena um you have for the payoffs the nightmare unicorn to just shuffle a guy back you have a ton of cards in your hand anyways because you you draw so many and add them back to your hand anyways so this is it's pretty nice uh plus you can often get this co-link so you even get to draw a card off of it which is very likely to be a hand trap because we've decked them so much um, as well as just not making us lose advantage, which is really nice. Um, another target for it is the Avermax. Uh, Avermax is just very easy to make in general, even without the IP in this deck, since we have two Link 2 monsters that we can go into fairly easily. Uh, this is really hard to out, especially if you make it with the IP, so it's untargetable and also indestructible by card effect, and it's not really destroyable by battle uh, because it'll gain the attack, right? Uh, unless we're running the Weather Washer to destroy it. Let's go... Uh, other options here, the Bujinki Ahashima, kind of scuffed, but there are some lines that let you go into a rank 4. Like, if you, for some reason, know that Dweller will just stop their turn immediately without giving them a chance, you can use the one-card combo to go into Ahashima and then go into any rank 4. So, that's good. You can actually make any uh, of the Exceed monsters in your extra deck that you can make normally off of this. Um it kind of screws with your normal game plan but sometimes this is a, a decent option don't think it's really worth it here uh, early is just free to make as well and you can trigger it off of your fusions um which also just gives you a negate as well that's pretty cool and uh, we also have the nightmare griffin this can get you back something from the graveyard that you might be missing if you want a uh, monster reborn back uh if you want uh, to have another pandemonium um for like follow up, maybe you want the call by back uh, to punish them even harder. And then of course, the special summon floodgate is crazy. You have a ton of link arrows in the stack, so you can pretty much ignore the floodgate yourself. Uh, also, most of your effects trigger in the graveyard, so that doesn't matter because they're not on the field, right? And we're also not special summoned. Um, and you can keep your opponent off of arrows because your extra deck monsters don't actually point towards your opponent. So that's pretty cool. All right, guys. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you learned something here. Uh, if you want to see more combos or more prank kid videos, be sure to check out uh, the other ones on my channel. I'll link uh, some of them in the description below. I've got them ranging from a budget version to this event version here to just normal versions on ladder. I have some older ones too. So be sure to check those out if you're interested in the deck or just leave a comment below. And I hope you guys enjoy the event. See ya.